the average life expectancy of a human in space is 15 seconds. Without the protection of a multi-million dollar spacesuit, your skin, mouth, and eyes literally boil and your lungs explode. The human body isn't built for space, but what if we could change it? What if we could create the perfect astronaut? NASA, from its inception, hasn't just looked to improve its spaceships, it's looked at improving its space men and women. The effect of zero gravity and cosmic radiation particles batter human bodies, even when they're in the relative safety of the craft. Dr. Toby Friedman was North American Aviation's medical director working on the American manned spaceflight program. He proposed a genetically modified astronaut which he called an optiman, able to withstand the hammer blows of space. You would find people who had the best eyesight, who had the most strength, who could live and breathe and function well at high altitudes. Then you would take these people and selectively breed until you came out with the optiman that had all these wonderful abilities. Friedman wanted an astronaut breeding program, like a horse trainer trying to create a derby winner. Since the Mercury program, NASA has been selecting astronauts according to desired physical and mental characteristics. But even super fit astronauts struggle to withstand the punishment of space travel. After 340 days on the ISS, the body of Top Gun Navy pilot Scott Kelly showed the strain. You have a mild form of osteoporosis after being in outer space. Your muscles atrophy, your bone density decreases, you get various sicknesses that you're not used to having. Uh, you could even go blind. So far, NASA's most robust space travelers are robots. But we are still very far from working out how to build a robot with anything like the extraordinary originality, intuition, subtle intelligence, imagination, and adaptability of a human. One pair of scientists, Manfred Kleins and Nathan Klein, believe they have the solution. A merger of man and machine. The scientists Kleins and Klein wrote a paper about uh, augmenting the human body with cybernetics, uh, and, they, and they called this person a cyborg. A man turned into a cyborg wouldn't just be able to survive a long journey on a spaceship. He'd be able to explore unaided on alien planets and even survive in space. They proposed sealing the mouth and nose shut of the astronaut, collapsing their lungs to prevent decompression, and then feeding the body with oxygen and nutrients using synthetic organs. The idea was to walk around in space without having to have a spacesuit. Half man, half robot, this cyborg astronaut would overcome the problems even the fittest human could not survive in space. It's a really interesting thought to think about. A type of human and mechanical being all at once. Replacing eyes with mechanical eyes. Replacing bones with a different type of material so you don't have to worry about the bone density loss. The idea is not only possible, but it's already uh, in works. We see this with uh, robotic uh, implants uh, of, of prosthetic limbs. It's phenomenal the degree of uh, advances that are being made. And NASA is, a, is leading in this. But there are practical problems using, maintaining, and replacing machine parts when you are thousands or millions of miles from factories or workshops. If the machine part of you stops working, you could be left alive but broken down unable to move, and condemned to a slow and excruciating death. I've always wanted to be an astronaut, but not like that. This cell... As well as combine man and machine, leading biochemist Craig Venter raises the possibility of blending humans with other creatures. Could NASA embrace genetic engineering, creating a new breed of space humans? came up with the idea that we should alter our DNA to give us the traits that we don't naturally have, such that we become resilient to space travel. 
inventor is leading a field where scientists splice DNA, producing incredible results. They've created glow-in-the-dark cats, neon fish, and goats that produce spider silk. Venter wants NASA to engineer astronauts with genes from other organisms, creating human hybrids. We can enhance ourselves to live and thrive in outer space so that cell repair mechanisms are accelerated. The modified astronaut could have genes to promote bone genesis, protect them naturally against radiation. We could also change the very form of our body. In outer space, legs and feet have very little use. What if you could replace your toes with fingers? Now you've got two more hands to be able to grip tools with. Playing God to this extent could create an entirely new strain of humans, and that's creepy. Tampering with the human genome is currently banned in the United States, but China is less squeamish. In 2018, a team of scientists announced they had successfully delivered a designer baby. Now, if you just create something from an embryo and you're, and you're working on a superhuman race that way, then you're getting into the supervillain territory. China is now leading a charge into space, and morality itself may prevent America from competing in a race to create space-traveling superhumans. China presents the greatest threat against the United States. I believe NASA is falling behind. I believe that's given China the opportunity to jump way in front of us, really. Some scientists hope there might be a way to crack what seems to be a coded signal from another star system. Mathematics and physics is the universal language of the universe. The engineers who build the radio telescopes on other planets need to know some basic math and physics. That's what we use as our universal language. It's very easy to explain math to another culture if they know math themselves. While they might not use the line up and down for one and a circle for a zero, they use some symbol for a one and a zero, or on and off. But as some scientists work out a possible way to decode the signal from Auriga, others urge them to stop. Whatever's making that signal has got to be very, very powerful. It's possible that an advanced civilization created these radio beacons to say, hey, look here, this is a signal that we left. Or is the signal more like bait, waiting for a response? They know how to find us. <laughs>